2023 has been yet another great year for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I feel like every year has been, uh, but I, I think this year has been especially impressive for Nintendo, considering the Switch is in its sixth year, and there's a lot of talk about its eventual successor. It is expected to be around the corner by this point. I mean, we'll see what happens with all that, uh, but a lot of times when a console preps for the next platform, uh, there is sometimes a drop-off for the current generation, but that's not what we're seeing with Nintendo. Nintendo is still churning out great game after great game for the Switch, and that's what we're going to look at in today's video. The top 15 best Nintendo Switch games that released in 2023. Now, this is only my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours as well, so do let me hear those in the comments below. But with that said, let's just go and jump right into the list. So here at number 15, I have Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. These are known as some of the best Game Boy Advance games ever made, and for good reason. And they're officially back and available on the Nintendo Switch. It took a couple delays to get here and everything, but uh, now that it is, definitely don't sleep on Advance Wars if you like strategy games. It's got improved visuals. There's a ton of content with two campaigns. It has online play, no more link cables, and it's just a great pick up and play strategy game. Once you do pick it up though, don't be surprised if you don't want to put it back down. And here I have a little game by the name of Cocoon. This is a shorter independent game that'll only take you around four hours to complete everything. Uh, but if you're looking for a short game to play during the weekend or something like that, Cocoon is a perfect choice here. Uh, this is probably one of the most unique games on this entire list. And, and for that matter, it's among the most unique puzzle games that I've ever played, period. And that's one of the reasons that it is so captivating. I, I love seeing new gameplay ideas like this, and that's exactly what you're going to get in Cocoon. It's completely its own thing. Now, it was made by the same gameplay designer who worked on Inside and Limbo. If you've played those games, uh, you will see some similarities between the three. It has that same mysterious atmosphere that just kind of grabs your attention, but it's the puzzles in Cocoon that really stands out. You collect these different orbs that you need to solve puzzles with, and the best way that I can kind of describe it is that it's Portal meets Inception. Now, I know that might be a strange description, but you'll kind of understand once you start to play it, and if you like puzzle games, definitely, definitely give Cocoon a try. Now, the Bayonetta series is known for a lot of things. Great combat, killer level design, and it's over-the-top personality that mixes in mature rated content. So to see something like Bayonetta Origins with its color book-esque art style, it might surprise some fans, but somehow, I feel like they pulled it off. This is a surprisingly fun adventure that dives further into the story of Cereza. In this new, more colorful world, you play as both Cereza and Cheshire, where you'll work together to solve various puzzles and take down enemies with dual stick combat. You will gain access to a lot of abilities throughout your playthrough, which keeps things fresh, uh, and it's just another really fun Bayonetta game. I feel like that's just always the best way to describe the Bayonetta series. They don't necessarily take themselves overly serious, but they're always a blast to play, and Bayonetta Origins is no different. It's just a new way to experience and have fun in its vibrant world. Now, next up here, I have Ghost Trick, which is another very unique title made by Capcom and the creator of the Ace Attorney series. Now, this game has been a little bit overlooked, but it seems like almost everybody who has played it absolutely loves it because it really is a great experience. I mean, to just kind of put things into perspective here and, and to show you how much people love this game, if you go look on Steam, you can see that 98% of all reviews recommends this game. That's always a very good sign. Uh, but the way this game works is that it's a mystery puzzle game with some point-and-click supernatural elements where you play as a ghost who wakes up dead. That's literally the starting point of Ghost Trick. Uh, you do play as a dead ghost ghost that has no idea how he actually got where he is. So he has to kind of uncover these different clues by manifesting himself into different objects that he can manipulate. And, and this makes for some very clever puzzles. And, you know, just describing that, I understand that might be a little confusing, but I'm telling you right now, uh, whether you like puzzle games or if you just want a good story, Ghost Trick is definitely worth a playthrough. F-Zero fans have been begging for a new entry pretty much since the GameCube days way back when we got F-Zero GX. It's, it's hard to believe it's been that long, uh, but Nintendo is finally listening or at least 
to some extent. They did give us F-099, which you can play on Switch Online, uh, and this is a brand new way to experience the Super Nintendo Classic. Now you can play F-099 with 98 other players to find out who's the best. At first, I wasn't really sure how this would work out. I thought maybe it might be a little too chaotic, uh, but once I started playing it, it surprisingly is very well implemented. In order to advance to the next round, you need to finish the race in one piece and also get in a high enough position for the next round. Nintendo has also done a pretty good job at updating F-099 with new content. It does now have a classic mode to make it feel a little bit more like the original if you do prefer that instead. So while it might not necessarily be the F-0 game that we were originally hoping for, it is still a lot of fun and it's a good start for maybe, hopefully, more to come. Now, I'll tell you one series that's had no issue surviving under the Nintendo umbrella, though, and uh, that's Fire Emblem. We did get another entry this year being Fire Emblem Engaged, though this time they took the series a little bit more back to its roots. Uh, if you weren't a fan of the social sim elements of Three Houses, you might prefer Engage instead, where it puts its combat front and center. Uh, that is the main focus once again. The one thing that they really tried to capitalize on is nostalgia by bringing back several fan favorite characters. One of the main attractions to engage is that you can fight alongside some fan favorite characters such as Ike, Roy, Marth, and much, much more. If you are a longtime fan of this series, uh, you'll be thrilled to recognize several familiar faces. Uh, but even if you haven't played every Fire Emblem game, you can still enjoy its once again excellent strategy RPG gameplay. Now we've seen HD 2D remakes get popularized this generation by Square Enix and and I went ahead and combined a couple of those here being Octopath Traveler 2 and Star Ocean Second Story R. Now I will say that Star Ocean immediately stands out among the crowd. Uh, typically these games have been for turn-based retro RPGs, uh, but Star Ocean, uh, this just shows you how diverse the HD 2D remakes can be because this is more of a 3D game with 2D sprites. It, it is quite mesmerizing to look at, uh, but instead of turn-based combat, this is an action RPG and it's just all so stunning to watch in motion. This might very well be one of the most visually impressive looking games that you can play on a Switch. It feels great, it looks great, but that's the thing because it's not just the visuals. Star Ocean Second Story R really is the entire package. It's got a great story, it has likable characters, the combat is a ton of fun, and if you like retro JRPGs, then you're going to love this game. Now if you like turn-based games more though, Octopath Travel 2 is also a great pickup. It's inspired by games like Final Fantasy VI, but it's unique in how it actually tells Tells its story. It instead focuses on eight different characters with individual stories. Some will be better than others, but they do group up together, and it really is one of the best the genre has to offer. Now, every once in a while, we get a game that as soon as you see it, you just know it's gonna be special. And that's the feeling you get when you see Sea of Stars. This game is beautiful in every sense of the word. Uh, the animations, the art style, just everything about this game. But there's so much more here that meets the eye. At first glance, you might recognize its Chrono Trigger inspiration, and I'd say that alone is already exciting, but something that caught me off guard is that this game is also inspired by the classic turn-based Mario RPGs where you time different button presses to strengthen your attacks and defense. This element really adds an extra layer to turn-based combat, and, and I think it just makes the gameplay a little bit more fun. The attention to detail, though, is something else that's really amazing in Sea of Stars. Every animation in this game, it looks so smooth, the gorgeous background scenery, its charming characters and story, the world building, just absolutely everything. You can tell that this game was made with a lot of heart. It's apparent and you'll quickly understand why Sea of Stars is just so special. It's an easy, instant classic. Now speaking of those inspirations, Nintendo gave us a surprise release this year in Super Mario RPG. Now I never played the original in its entirety, so I'm not speaking on behalf of nostalgia, but now that I've played it, I can fully understand why there's just so much love for this game. It's this weird Mario collaboration between Nintendo and Square Enix, and I am all for it. It gives Mario and its universe this bizarre but charming personality. Some of the dialogue and the options it gives Mario and its other characters genuinely surprise me at times. 
but it's always humorous. And, and I think that that's what really stood out to me in Super Mario RPG. It's just got this charm to it, is the best way that I can describe it. Now, its combat, though, is a little bit on the easier side of things, though. I, I do wish that Nintendo would give us the option for more challenge, and it's also on the shorter side of things for a JRPG, but even with that, I think it's just long enough to be a fun ride. Yeah, okay, so Nintendo and JRPGs are pretty fond of one another. I don't think that that's really a huge surprise. Uh, it really is one of the best consoles ever made for JRPGs, uh, and now I can even more definitively say that because it finally has the Persona series. This year alone, the Switch got Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 Tactica, all of which are fantastic experiences. Now, how these games typically work is that you play as a high school student that discovers a parallel world with demons and monsters, and that world also impacts the human world in some shape or form. So you live your everyday school life, you have to kind of go to school, and there's this social sim element to the games, and then in this other world, you and your friends try to solve these various problems by collecting these monsters and battling demons. It's not only a lot of fun to play, but it's the stories and the characters that truly shines. I can't really recall many games that's captivated me in quite the same way as the Persona titles, especially Persona 4 Golden. That is my own personal favorite, so if I had to recommend just one, that would be my go-to. Uh, but if you're a fan of Persona 5, don't forget about Persona 5 Tactica, which is a tactical RPG spinoff that just released in 2023. Okay, now we're really getting into the good stuff here as Mario Wonder enters in at the number five spot. This is a highly imaginative platformer that creates wonder quite literally. Every single level in this game has a new playstyle if you can locate its wonder flower. Uh, in one level, you might turn into a Goomba where you have to run and hide for your life. It's a, it's this whole new dynamic. In another level, you might become a spiky rolling ball that you crash and destroy everything in its path. Or maybe the wonder flower brings on a whimsical musical that brings joy to the entire family. There's just so many things that they throw at you in this game that you really just want to see what comes next. That playful creativity and its diverse gameplay is a big part of the fun in Mario Wonder. The only thing, though, is that Mario Wonder spends more time being imaginative than actually being challenging. This is a very easy game, so if you're hoping for more of a challenge, you're not really going to get that in Mario Wonder. Even the most difficult levels in this game, I did not have a problem with. I can see other people maybe having some issues, but... Outside of that, I think that Mario Wonder is a great game for the entire family. Now, this next one here is technically an expansion, but if you like the Xenoblade series, then you owe yourself a favor by playing Xenoblade 3 Future Redeemed. This brings the entire trilogy together in a remarkable way. I'll let you figure out all that yourself, but uh, Xenoblade has really become one of Nintendo's highest quality franchises, uh, which, you know, that that's saying a lot. They have some great games, uh, but uh, the Xenoblade series, they have exceptional stories. They have these big open zone locations that you can explore, and they're a thing of beauty. And then their combat, it, it's kind of unique. They almost play kind of similar to an MMO where you pick and choose your attacks in real-time combat. It just works and feels good as you work together as a team. Uh, so my recommendation here is that if you've played all three Xenoblade games, uh, you absolutely need to play Future Connected. And if you haven't, I'd highly recommend playing through the Xenoblade series, which they are all available on the Nintendo Switch. Pikmin for years has secretly been one of Nintendo's better franchises. And in 2023, people are starting to notice that. You can now play the entire series on the Switch, including the newest title, Pikmin 4. Now, longtime fans will know exactly what to expect here. It's a unique puzzle experience where you use these adorable little minions named after Pick Pick Carrots to help you on an alien planet, or at least to them. They all have their own unique abilities, which helps you solve different problems and fight off hostile alien creatures. Pikmin 4, though, does, however, have some new inclusions as well this time around. You now have an alien dog-like companion that brings an entirely new element to the game. You can now venture out during night with a new Pikmin variant, and then it also has a new camera angle that brings you closer to the action. I really enjoyed this specific feature because Pikmin is such a beautiful series. You do play as a miniature being on a desolate earth, and, and to see the scale of everything from their perspective 
adds something I think is truly special to its already great atmosphere. One nitpick that I do have though, and this tends to be a very Nintendo problem across the board, I, I wish they would open up the options for players to customize the game how they like to play, which in, in this includes its auto target. It would be nice if they actually allowed us to turn things like that on or off. As for newcomers though, even if this is your first Pikmin game, it's still a great entry point, uh, part thanks to its alternate history storyline. Now, one thing that I really enjoyed about Nintendo's 2023 catalog, and you can kind of see that with this list, is that they brought back several of their underutilized franchises, including one of the all-time greats, Metroid Prime. While this new version is titled Metroid Prime Remastered, I, I really don't think that calling it a simple remaster does this game justice. Not even close, because in truth, Metroid Prime Remastered is flat out one of the best looking games available on the Switch. And not only does its gameplay stand the test of time, but it also comes with improvements that makes it, in my opinion, much better. For as good as the original is, its controls is one of the biggest gripes. In the remaster, however, that has now been fixed and you have the option to play the way you want to. If you like the original GameCube controls, you can absolutely play it that way. If you like motion controls more similar to the Wii, that's there as well, or you can even do a combination of the two. The option is completely yours, and with everything that this game has to offer, it immediately makes it one of the best games that you can play on the Nintendo Switch. From the alien atmosphere to the labyrinth Metroidvania design and its new improved combat, this is a must-own game for the Switch and a great way of jumping into the series before the eventual Metroid Prime 4. And at the number one spot, it has to go to what probably was the most anticipated Switch game for the entire generation, being Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We finally got to play this game ourselves this year, and if you like Breath of the Wild, the sequel is better in every single way imaginable. It really feels like what they did in Tears of the Kingdom is that they more or less refined the open world Zelda experience. Of course, there's a ton of things to do, and they even added two completely new ways to explore. It really feels like it's endless at times because not only can you explore the surface, but you can also journey to the sky or even below ground where there's a dark labyrinth to navigate. It's also the most customizable Zelda to date. There's a lot of secrets to uncover, but what really stood out to me specifically was the effort that they put towards its shrines and its new temples. These were the two biggest complaints in Breath of the Wild, and not only did they make the shrines more interesting this time, but they added temples to its formula. This is to address the lack of dungeons that we are so used to seeing in the classic Zelda experience, and while I still don't think that it's quite as good as the original dungeon formula, it is, however, a big step up, and, and these temples do give you a chance to take advantage of the abilities that you unlock throughout its playthrough. I'll just kind of leave it this way, though. I think it's safe to say that this is another Zelda entry that will be played for decades to come and will be remembered as one of the all-time greats. There you go, though. That's it for this list. Hopefully you enjoyed it, but do remember that this is only my opinion. I'd, I'd love to hear yours as well. Let me hear those in the comments below. But with that said... Until next time, peace out.